Infection is one of the most serious issues facing healthcare today. Recently, outbreaks of MRSA have shown just how serious its consequences can be for you, those you care about, healthcare patients and society as a whole. The results can be lower funds for treatment or staffing and in the case of patients cause permanent disability and even death. Evidence shows that correct hand hygiene practice is one of the best ways to control the spread of healthcare associated infections. It stops harmful microbes passing from person to person and from person to object. By being thorough with your hand hygiene, you can help patients to recover more quickly, help reduce the amount of time patients remain in your care, help limit patients' need for and frequency of treatment, help patients to regain or maintain their ability to perform normal, everyday activities. The aim of this video is to enhance your understanding of the principles of hand hygiene so that you can help prevent the spread of harmful infections. For the past 180 years, scientists and physicians have recognized the importance of hand hygiene. In 1825, French pharmacist Antoine Germain Labarac was the first to write about the subject. Then some 20 years later, Ignaz Schemmelweis identified a link between hand hygiene and cross infection. Today, there's a wealth of education, training and literature that describes good hand hygiene practice and its importance. Yet research shows that we still ignore many of the basic principles. The fact is, our personal beliefs about hand hygiene tend to affect how we behave. For instance, you might think that because your hands aren't visibly dirty, they don't need decontaminating or because you haven't come into physical contact with a patient, that there's no risk of picking up an infection. How we approach our job has a lot to do with why we think and act this way. Most of us focus on completing tasks we believe will make most difference to patients as quickly as possible. Without thinking, we often push hand hygiene down the list. And since the healthcare environment is often demanding and stressful, it's easy to overlook proper hygiene practice. Have you got those notes? Another reason why we neglect hand hygiene is that we don't believe that we will ever be personally affected by healthcare associated infection. Unfortunately, this kind of irrational belief affects the people immediately around us and beyond. Remember that under the Health and Safety at Work Act, you are required to take reasonable steps to ensure the health, safety and welfare of others at work. If you do not show good hand hygiene practice, you could break this regulation by putting both yourself and others at risk of infection. Okay.